After the agonizing nature of their last 16 defeat by Belgium, Japan's World Cup squad and their thousands of fans would have been forgiven for leaving the Rostov Arena as swiftly as possible. A number of Japan players were in tears after being knocked out of the tournament when a late late goal from Nasser Chadli sealed a 3-2 comeback victory for Belgium. But, as revealed by FIFA general coordinator Priscilla Janssens on Twitter, Japan's squad went to extra lengths to thank their hosts in Russia as they bowed out. Sharing a picture of their spotless post-match dressing room, Janssens wrote, This is the Japanese dressing room, sick, after losing to Belgium in the 94 minute. Thanked their fans in the stadium, cleaned up everything, bench and dressing room, and spoke to media. Even left note with thank you in Russian. What an example for all teams. Privilege to work with. Japan's fans were also pictured collecting rubbish from the stands moments after watching their side crash out in the most dramatic of circumstances. Their traveling supporters in Russia have been seen staying behind after each of their matches to help stadium workers to clear away litter. And on Monday, this was all after Japan seemed destined to cause the latest shock of a dramatic World Cup. They carved out a 2-0 lead over Belgium one of the favourites to win the tournament in the second half in Rostov, thanks to two goals in four minutes from Genki Haraguchi, 48, and Takashi Inui, 52. But Belgium replied with a quick-fire double of their own. Tottenham's Jan Bergen sparked the comeback in the 69th minute and Merao Ainfellaini hauled them level five minutes later. Belgium then stole victory in the 94th minute when Thibaut Courtois caught a Japan corner and started a sweeping counter-attack through Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne found Thomas Muenier surging forward on the right and his low cross was left by Romelu Lukaku for the onrushing Chadley to convert from close range. I do not want to really admit it, but this was a tragedy, but I have to accept this defeat as a fact. I feel devastated, very disappointed, Japan coach Akira Nishino said. The players played to the best of their abilities, we were able to show good football on the pitch, but our aim was to go to the next round, so I cannot call this a success. I told the players to go and take a shower because they were just standing there not able to do anything. It's not just that we played well, but we had to win this game, we wanted to win, our team were strong enough, and we were able to match Belgium and I believed we could beat them. When they scored I questioned whether I was in control in the game and thought that I should be blamed and not the players. I blamed myself, I questioned my tactics, he added. That I wanted my players to have a different mentality to Japanese teams in the past, I think we succeeded in having a different mentality, but there was something missing in our skills and powers. Belgium's comeback against Japan can't mask the flaws in their system. Roberto Martinez's tactics are naive, and Brazil will be licking their lips. As Belgium fell two goals behind to Takashi Inui's stunning 52nd minute strike, Roberto Martinez stood with his arms folded on the edge of his technical area. As Belgium's side were crashing out of the tournament, their country's golden generation watching their hopes of World Cup glory go up in smoke. Doc Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, Romelu Lukaku, Toby Alderweireld, Vincent Company. None would have the chance to win on the world's biggest stage while still at their prime. And it seemed crystal clear were to place the blame. 
There were warning signs heading into the tournament. One of those star players, De Bruyne, saw it coming as early as November, criticizing Martinez's system as overly negative following a 3-3 friendly draw with Mexico. Dr. Brian's frustrations were understandable given his criminal misuse by Belgium. The star man in Pep Guardiola's title-winning Manchester City side and one of the elite playmakers in Europe, De Bruyne is shackled with defensive responsibilities for his country as a deep-lying central midfielder under Martinez. His ineffectual display against Japan is just one of the major flaws in a Martinez system that fails miserably to extract the best of the players at his disposal. Dot Martinez's predecessor Mark Wilmots was accused of the same thing after their Euro 2016 exit to Wales, the current manager can expect similar criticism should Belgium fall to Brazil in the next round. A 3-5-2 formation was chosen by Martinez on his appointment despite no suitable options for wing-back. Yannick Carrasco and Thomas Munier were selected to play wide despite neither looking comfortable with defensive responsibilities. It was fitting that Belgium were so nearly dumped out by a disciplined tactical performance. On Monday evening in Rostov, both were left horribly exposed by Japan's wide players in Yui and Genki Haraguchi who got in behind the wingbacks almost at all. Dries Mertens and Hazard pushed far too high up, leaving acres of space for the opposition wingers to run into and with more care Japan could have taken a lead heading into the break. Dot in possession Belgium's centre-back trio Jan Verbenen, Alderweireld, and company only had simple balls on to Witzel and De Bruyne, who were forced to drop deep in order to get involved. Dot and in four second half minutes Belgium were spectacularly put to the sword by a far less talented but far more organised Japan side. The attack-minded Carrasco, now playing his trade in the Chinese Super League, was a while as a long ball in behind caught Belgium out. Verdun and misjudged and Haraguchi took full advantage. Dot the second came with another wide ball over the top. Belgium half cleared a cross, the ball came to Inui and Witzel couldn't prevent the midfielder from unleashing a stunning strike past the ball Courtois. Dot of course, Belgium would eventually dig themselves out of the hole. A fluke-headed goal from Bergman, another from Merau and Fellaini and a clinical counter-attack finished off by Nasser Chadley, did the damage as Belgium overpowered Japan. But the comeback was down to an abandonment of Martinez's 3-5-2. De Bruyne pushed further forward, and Belgium began swinging crosses in to make use of their superior height advantage. They would escape, but only after an almighty scare. No negative things, Martinez said in the post match interview, burying his head into the sand. But a dramatic late show can't mask the glaring issues in Belgium's system. Brazil won't be so forgiving, and Neymar, Felipe Coutinho, Gabriel Jesus, and company will be licking their lips heading into Friday's quarter final in Kazan. Doc Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard, Romelu Lukaku, Toby Alderweireld, Vincent Company. None would have the chance to win on the world's biggest stage while still at their prime. And it seemed crystal clear were to place the blame. Dot there were warning signs heading into the tournament. One of those star players, De Bruyne, saw it coming as early as November, criticizing Martinez's system as overly negative following a 3-3 friendly draw with Mexico. Dr. Bruyne's frustrations were understandable given his criminal misuse by Belgium. 
the star man in Pep Guardiola's title-winning Manchester City side and one of the elite playmakers in Europe, De Bruyne is shackled with defensive responsibilities for his country as a deep-lying central midfielder under Martinez. His ineffectual display against Japan is just one of the major flaws in a Martinez system that fails miserably to extract the best of the players at his disposal. Dot Martinez's predecessor Mark Wilmots was accused of the same thing after their Euro 2016 exit to Wales, the current manager can expect similar criticism should Belgium fall to Brazil in the next round. A 3-5-2 formation was chosen by Martinez on his appointment despite no suitable options for wing-back. Yannick Carrasco and Thomas Munier were selected to play wide despite neither looking comfortable with defensive responsibilities. It was fitting that Belgium were so nearly dumped out by a disciplined tactical performance. On Monday evening in Rostov, both were left horribly exposed by Japan's wide players Inui and Genki Haraguchi who got in behind the wingbacks almost at will.